Hello everyone, welcome to the channel Top Gate. In this video, I'll discuss one more example of round robin scheduling algorithm. And in the previous lecture, we have already seen that what is a round robin scheduling algorithm and how we solve questions based on this particular algorithm. Clear? So if you remember, I told you that uh, in round robin scheduling algorithm, uh, before making the GAN chart, we must make a ready queue. Because if we are making a ready queue, then with the help of the ready queue, uh, we can make the GAN chart very easily and the chances of error are negligible. But if we are not making the ready queue and we are directly making the GAN chart, then there are many chances that we can make some mistakes. Clear? So it's always advisable that you should first make the ready queue and with the help of the ready queue, you make the GAN chart. So let's come to this example. So in this one, we have six process P1 to P6 and for those processes, we have been given the arrival times and the burst times. Clear? And the time quantum that we have been given with is 3. Fine? So that means that a process cannot execute for more than 3 time units in a single iteration. Irrespective of its burst time, irrespective of anything, the process cannot execute for more than 3 time units in a single iteration. Clear? So uh, first of all, let's make the ready queue and then with the help of the ready queue, we'll make the GAN chart. Okay, so currently we are at time zero. So at time zero, I'll try to find out is there any process which is arriving in the RAM? So yes, P1 is there which is arriving in the RAM at time zero. So at time zero, there is only one process in the RAM. So I don't have any competition. I have only one option that is P1. So P1 goes into the RAM. So in the RAM, we have only one process right now. So since there is only one process, therefore I will take it and I'll schedule it on the CPU. So at time zero, this P1 will start and P1's burst time is four, but the time quantum is three. That means the P1 cannot execute for more than three time units. So it will start at zero and it will stop at three. Clear? So now we are at three right now. And at this point, we will do two things. The first thing is, I'll see that till time three, is there any process which is arriving in the RAM? So I'll see in this one. Yes, we have P2, P3 and P4, which are coming till time three. P2 came at one, P3 came at two, P4 came at three. So right now we have three process. So the first step that we'll do is we will write all the three process here that is P2, P3, P4. So I will write P2 here, P3 here and P4 also. That is the first step. Second step is I'll see that whether P1 has completed its work or not. If P1 has completed its work, then fine. But if it is not completed, it will go to the end of the ready queue. So P1's burst time is four. It has executed three. So how many left? One is still left. Clear? So therefore, this iteration is gone. So I will write this P1 here. That is the second step. So first step is we are seeing that till that time, is there any process which is coming in the RAM? So yes, there are three process. So we have written all those three process. Now we will see whether the first process that is P1 has that process finished its work. If yes, then fine, just cut it. Don't write it here. But if its burst time is still left, then we will cut this here and we'll write it here. Fine. So now uh, in the ready queue, on the head of the ready queue, we have P2 here. So P2, P2's requirement is 5, but the time quantum is 3. So I'll start P2 here and P2 will complete its first iteration at 6. Fine. So we are at time 6 right now. So again, I'll see the first step. First step is I'll see till time 6 is there any process which is arriving in the RAM. So uh, we are done with P4. So till time 6 we have P5 also, P6 also. P5 came at 4, P6 came at 6. So that is the first step. I will write P5 and P6 here. Fine. Second step, I'll see whether P2 has completed its work or not. So I'll see that P2 has completed 3 units. Again, its two units are still left. So therefore, I will cut it and I will write it here. That is the second step. Clear? Now, on the head of the ready queue, we have P3. So now I will schedule P3. So now P3's requirement, you can see it's only two. However, the quantum is three, but 
its requirement is only 2 so we cannot do anything we can start this p3 from 6 and we will end it at 8 fine so this process p3 has completed its work it is terminated and it will now go out of the system so there is no p3 now clear and we are at time 8 now so at time 8 first step i will again see is there any process which is arriving in the ram so uh, because every process has already arrived so therefore i will not see that step again now so currently we are at time time 8 so therefore i will see that whether p3 has completed this work or not so p3 it has completed its work it has terminated therefore i will cut this and i will not write it here clear so now next process on the head of the ready queue is p4 so i'll start this p4 and p4's requirement is 1 so i'll start at 8 and it will end at 9 so p4 also completed its work and terminated and went out of the system so there is no p3 no p4 in the system right now clear so i'll see whether p4 has completed its work or not yes p4 has completed therefore i'll cut it and i will not write it here clear so now on the head of the ready queue we have p1 so p1 will start and p1's remaining time unit is one now because it has already executed three units only one is left therefore it will start at nine and complete its work at 10 so this will again terminate it and goes out of the system there is no p1 now there is no p1 there is no p3 there is no p4 fine so we are at 10 so i'll see in this one p1 whether p1 has completed yes p1 has completed so i'll cut it and i will not write it here clear so the next process on the head of the ready queue is p5 so p5 i'll see that p5's requirement is 6 but the time quantum is 3 so i'll schedule p5 now and it will start at 10 and stop at 13 so 3 done 3 are still left clear so i'll see here now the p5 whether it has completed or not p5 has not completed still three units are left therefore i will cut it and i will write it here done so the next process on the head of the ready queue is p6 so we have p6 now p6 requirement is only three so it will start at 13 and it will stop at 16 so it is also completed goes out of the system and terminated okay so now in this one p6 has it done yes it has completed so i will cut it and i will not write it here clear so now on the head of the ready queue we have p2 so p2's requirement is only 2 right now so it will start at 16 and it will complete its work at 18 so it is again completed terminated and went out of the system so there is no p2 now fine so this p2 i'll cut it and i will not write it here why because p2's work is finished now now on the head of the ready queue we have p5 so p5's remaining burst time is 3 so p5 will start at 18 and it will complete its work at 21 i will cut it and this will also be terminated so all the process have been scheduled and this is the GAN chart for round robin scheduling algorithm for this particular example. So now let's quickly calculate the completion time, turnaround time and the wait time. So the completion time for P1. P1 is running in 1, 2, 2 iterations. So the completion time of P1 is 10. So I'll quickly write 10 here. For P2, P2's completion time is 18. So I will write 18 here p3's completion time is 8 so i will write 8 here p4's completion time is 9 so i'll write 9 here p5's completion time is 21 and p6 completion time is 16 so i will write 16 here so this is the completion time for all the processes now we'll find out the turnaround time so the turnaround time we know it can be calculated by completion time minus the arrival time so i'll write the completion time first put the minus signs and the arrival time so arrival times are 0 1 2 3 4 6 so 0 1 2 3 4 6 that will give you 10 that will give you 17 8 minus 2 is 6 9 minus 3 is 6 
21 minus 4 is 17, 16 minus 6 is 10. Clear? Now the wait time, wait time is turnaround time minus the burst time. So 10, 17, 6, 6, 17, 10. Put the minus signs and the burst time. The burst times are 4, 5, 2, 1, 6, 3. 4, 5, 2, 1, 6, 3. That will give you 6. That will give you uh, 12. That is 4. That is 5. 17 minus 6 is 11. 10 minus 3 is 7. So we have found out the turnaround time and the burst time for the individual processes. Now let's calculate the average waiting time. Average wait time is we have this one 6 plus 12 plus 4 plus 5 plus 11 plus 7 divided by we have 6 process that will give you 6 plus 12 is 18 18 plus 4 is 22 22 plus 5 is 27 27 plus 11 is 38 and 38 plus 7 is 45 so 45 divided by 6 that will give you uh, 7 point uh, 42 and 30 it will be 5 clear and the average turnaround time will be we have this one 10 17 6 6 we have 10 plus 17 plus 6 plus 6 plus 17 plus 10 plus 17 plus 10 divided by 6 that is 10 plus 17 is 27, 27 plus 6 is 33, 39, uh, 49, 56, 66. So 66 upon 6, that will give you 11. So 11 is the average turnaround time and 7.5 is the average waiting time. Clear? Thank you so much.